Everyday Expertise, and I'm Angela, and I'm here today with Rhonda Hewitson. She is an abstract painter based in Guelph, Ontario. Hello! Hi! So, how did you get started in painting? Um, actually, I just kind of fell into it. It was something I wanted to try for a while, and uh, just decided one day to uh, buy some paint and uh, get some canvas and just give it a shot. And it actually uh, didn't work out the first couple of times that I tried. Um, I, I, I went with oil and discovered that oil and I are not a good combination. So I uh, decided to try acrylic and that was a much better fit. And so I just uh, kept going and I tried landscape first and discovered that's not a good idea as well. And um, I went with abstract and that just seems to be a good fit and it just kind of flows. So it works well. Yeah. That's cool. So that's your, that would be your preferred medium then is acrylic on canvas? Or, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Acrylic on canvas. I do occasionally work with uh, wood board, mm -hmm. um, cradle board, that kind of material, but I prefer canvas. It's flexible and it, it gives you a little bit more uh, opportunity to work with texture and, and mm -hmm. it's a little more receptive to texture, I guess, is probably a better way to put it. So mm -hmm. I like to play with canvas and, and different mediums, uh, acrylic mediums and then mm. gels and things like that. Uh, one thing I, I noticed from your work, your your paintings are, are absolutely beautiful. Thank the, you. The one, certainly the ones I've seen. Um, it, a lot of this, it seems, a lot of your work seems to evoke water. You use a lot of blues, there's very fluid sort of strokes. Um, what about that theme attracts you? Um, I just find it to be very serene and calming and, and tranquil. And I, I tend to paint things that I find to be very calming and, and relaxing. And I want the, the viewer to feel that tranquility when they look at my work. So um, I tend to go with flowy kind of look and feel to my work. It just kind of seems to happen that way. It's not always intended. It's just happy coincidence, I guess, that it works out that way. And I don't know what it is about water. I, I think it's just that that peacefulness that I'm, I'm attracted to. So I, I tend to pull a lot of that into my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so this shows very much about process. Uh, can you walk me through the process of creating a, a work uh, from sort of idea to finished piece? Sure. So sometimes I have a concept in my brain of what I want to do. And then other times it's just, um, I'm a, I'm a pretty intuitive painter. So, um, I, I kind of start with color schemes in my head of what I want. Um, and then most of the time I just crank up some music and I just kind of go at it. I don't always have a rhyme or reason. Unfortunately, there's not a, some kind of golden story there. It just kind of happens. Um, I, I pick colors and, and sometimes I have a loose idea of what I want it to look like. Um, the ones that look, you know, very decisively like water, those are the ones that I, I have a plan and I try to execute it and, and that's kind of how it goes. Mm -hmm. But the ones that I, I tend to go with a lot of more vibrant, bright colors, it's just kind of just playing around and it just kind of happens. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have some crazy story about how it works it just kind of it just happens yeah and then um so you you paint right and then how do you finish it how do you finish the painting do you uh do you seal it or anything like that yeah so if uh, all of my pieces get a coat of varnish mm -hmm. uh, but if if i'm uh, wanting to really pull the pigments and pull the color out of the paint I'll coat it with uh, resin mm. and uh, that just adds a, a like a lacquer kind of varnish or shine to it that really, really pulls out that color mm -hmm. and it makes it pop off the canvas and then it reflects the light. So when you look at the painting, you'll see um, the, the it almost kind of has a prismatic appearance with the, the paint once the resin is over top of it. So I like to use the resin uh, on some of my pieces, I usually only use it on like medium sized pieces. Resin is an expensive material to work with. So mm. um, I tend to use it on my, more of the medium sized pieces, but all of my pieces get sealed with uh, a coat of varnish. And that's mainly um, to protect it from UV 
Um, but it also, it just, again, adds that nice sheen to it and makes it mm. a little bit more attractive when, when it's all said and done. And, and it makes the, the texture a little bit more uh, pronounced as well when you add a, a coat of varnish onto it. So you see all of the edges a little bit more because, again, the, the shine reflects the light. So, yeah. Gives it, I guess, sort of layers almost. of. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. It gives it this uh, just a nice finish to it, and it mm. and then all of the all of my paintings, I trim uh, paint the edges black, um, so that it almost kind of gives it like a floating frame kind of appearance. Oh. So having the edges black just kind of finishes it off nicely, um, and then the viewer can focus on the painting and not on any unfinished part. So it all just mm. kind of ties it nicely together, and and it looks pretty. So I like it. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of music do you listen to when you're painting? Um, a little bit of everything, but mostly kind of like top 40. I'm, I'm a top 40 kind of girl, I guess, <laughs> so, but a little bit of everything. I'll throw on, um, anything from, you know, Mariana's Trench to, um, whatever's current and playing on the radio right now and, um, uh, just make it go and, hope for the best and <clears throat> sometimes it doesn't always work out and so I'll, I'll oftentimes I'll reuse canvases if the painting isn't working out quite the way that I want um I'll just paint over it and mm. it actually gives it some nice texture and some layering effects as well so it kind of works out in the end if if the painting didn't work out the first time the second time I can usually pull from that texture of the underpainting and kind of go from there mm. yeah that's interesting yeah all right, so um, major influences. What or who would you say? Anything um, that uh, particularly influences your painting? I would say mostly just nature, just kind of going out and, and looking around at things. Like I, I finished the painting today and um, I had the windows open and there was a breeze going and I could hear the, the breeze in the trees and it just kind of influenced the mood that I had and and how I wanted to create that movement in the painting and so a lot of times it's just you know whatever is going on in my immediate surroundings if it's you know um if it's music if it sounds in in just in my surroundings if it's uh you know I see something on a walk and it it just draws my attention then I'll just go with that um most of the time, yeah, it's it's just kind of, like I said, I'm a very intuitive painter. So whatever it is that's inspiring me at the moment is just kind of what I go with. And then I just kind of wing it. Mm. Yeah. Any, uh, any artists or, um, or, or other genres or anything like this that, uh, that influence your work? Um, Inspire it? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of um, Toronto artists that I... Um, Toronto and Vancouver artists that I like that I follow on Instagram. Um, you know, Sarah Purvis, she's a relatively new artist. I follow her, uh, Tiffany Reed. I follow her. Um, I like their work. I like how bright and vibrant it is. Um, I like their bold use of color. So that's kind of what attracts me is, uh, their use of color. As far as like traditional and classic artists, I really love how Van Gogh used a lot of texture in his piece. Mm. And I know his work wasn't appreciated till well after he was gone, which is unfortunate. And I hope that doesn't happen to me. <laughs> but um, I, I really loved his use of texture. And I find that to be, even in this, this time, at this day and age, a lot of people are, are pulling a lot of texture and using that palette knife palette work that he did and um I, I really like using the palette knife that's one of my favorite tools so I yeah I tend to go with that now I know he he used brush but um I get the same kind of texture using a palette knife and I find it gives the same kind of results so mm. so what's something you wish you'd known about painting before you began before you uh, embarked on this journey um I just wish I had started sooner. Mm. I wish I had started playing with paint and, um, and mediums and, and canvases and, and things sooner. Um, 
And I wish I had a little bit more patience because then I could work with something with say oils uh, because they do tend to take a lot more time to dry in between layers. Um, as far as what I wish I knew about painting itself, probably just a little bit more technique. I maybe wish that I had taken some classes or, or gone to school for art or something like that. I think um, that would really help move my journey a little bit further along because I am relatively new to painting. I've only been doing it for I don't know, 12 or 13 years. Mm. So I, I wish that I had um, maybe taken some classes or something. There's still time for that. I could still do it. But other than that, I just wish I'd started sooner because I, I love it. And I really wish that I had started sooner. Was there something that, that made it like click for you that that was what you wanted to do? artistically no it was just something that um well the, I, my aunt does a little bit of painting as well mm -hmm. um and i had always just kind of thought that it was really cool and i just wanted to give it a try and it just kind of i found once i started painting that my brain just kind of shut off and mm. all of the thoughts that you know from your day to day all your busy day to day kind of stuff just kind of emptied out of my brain and all of a sudden everything went quiet and it was just, it was kind of oddly relaxing and, and just kind of quiet. And I, I, I thought it was really cool. So I kept doing it and I, I tend to have, you know, high anxiety on a good day. So mm. when I paint, all of that just kind of goes away and I just mm. get quiet and, and it just makes me feel very happy. So I just love doing it. That's cool. Yeah. It's great when you can find something that uh that calms your mind like that. Yeah, it is. It's 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 a, a really cool effect of painting for me that you know, I start painting and then all of a sudden my brain just gets quiet and all of the the worries and the thoughts of the day to day just kind of empty out of my mind and I just find that I'm very peaceful when I'm doing it and it just makes me very, very happy inside and I don't worry about things and I can paint for hours and then all of a sudden realize that I hadn't thought about whatever it was that was on my mind for that whole period. And it's, um, it's just kind of cool the way that it works out that all of a sudden, you know, all this time has passed and I'm, I'm not worrying about anything. I've just been enjoying my painting and it just makes me really happy. So how do you integrate your art into your daily life? Cause, uh, do you have a day job as well? I do. Um, I have a, a job in marketing and graphic design, so I actually get to be creative most of my day. So it kind of works out great. Um, I'm a self-taught marketing and graphic design artist, so it just kind of worked out. You know, I'm self-taught at that. I'm self-taught at painting. So, yeah, I like to learn. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I, I get to enjoy some creativity in my daily routine as well. So that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, but I do find there's a lot of times when I'm working on projects for work that, um, you know, something will inspire me and I'll go, oh, that would make a great painting, um, you know, or ooh, that, that's a cool color. I should work with that color or, you know, something like that will just kind of trigger it and, and it'll be sort of an inspiration. So mm -hmm. it kind of works out. That's good. Yeah, that helps. I mean, I think uh, as not everyone gets to, you know, sort of have that creative at work and creative at home kind of thing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's nice to be able to have that that span of creativity throughout the day, because, um, you know, people who are creative tend to get bored pretty easy. <laughs> That's true. So if I get to be creative all day, then uh, and I can be creative in the evenings and on the weekends as well. It's a nice combination. Mm. So, uh, what would you say is your favorite aspect of painting? Um, just playing with the paint, the texture of it, and, and spreading across the canvas. Like I said before, I, I like to use palette knife um, to do palette knife work. That tends to uh, give a lot of texture and depth to the, the painting. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just you know something about spreading and smearing paint across canvas is just um it's a serene sensation i don't really know how else to describe it but i just find it to be very very um 
enjoyable for some reason. Um, so that's probably my favorite aspect of it. Plus, you know, I get to pick and, and play with colors that I wouldn't normally. Um, and I'm someone who would put pretty much any bright, bold color on my wall. I know a lot of people tend to kind of shy away from that. So I'm, I'm hoping that people will see my work and see all the bright colors and want to have that in their space mm. and want to have that as something that would inspire them as well. Because I, I do love to use a lot of bright, bold colors. And uh, I don't know, I just, I'm hoping that I can change some people's minds and maybe they'll want to have some bright, bold colors in their houses too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you have a least favorite aspect? Something that frustrates you? Um, sometimes uh, you can overwork a painting and that gets very frustrating when you're playing with paint sometimes. Um, if you overmix or or you uh, move the paint around too much, it can get kind of um, cloudy in the way that the colors turn out and it can end up, you know, getting kind of a gray kind of tone to it or um, you just you overwork it or you add too much and then it just kind of looks crowded. And um, so sometimes that can get frustrating when you overwork something and, you know, you, you you're working on a piece and it looks great and you're you're thinking oh this is this is turning out great and then oh maybe i'll just do a couple more things and then you're overworking it and then it mm -hmm. ends up and then you end up covering it in white and painting over it <laughs> well that's okay <laughs> so how do you uh how do you cope with stress or obstacles um in the pursuit of your art you know when something's just not working out um, I usually use painting as my, my coping mechanism for stress. <laughs> so when I find that I'm having kind of like a painter's block, mm -hmm. um, I, I usually just kind of have to step away for a little bit from, from the painting. And then I'll just kind of focus on, uh, promoting my, my work a little bit more instead of painting. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I'll, I'll do a lot more of the social media kind of stuff to try to push. Um, and I just launched a new website, so, you know, I'll work on that or, you know, things like that, just instead of actually physically painting, um, or I'll, you know, look at some other art artists work and try to get inspired or see what something that'll spark my interest again. Um, but it's, it's not a, a very frequent thing. Cause I, again, I use painting as my coping mechanism for stress. <laughs> so, um, I, if I just get frustrated, I just have to walk away for the day and, and come back the next day and hope that, you know, whatever it was that was blocking my creativity is gone and I can just start fresh. Do you ever get like, like total block where you just, you have no ideas? Oh yeah, it happens. It happens. There's been, you know, weeks where I haven't painted anything and it's, and it happens to everyone where you just, you know, you just don't have that's the creative spark for some reason it just kind of fades for a little bit but you know it's going to come back it always does you just sometimes need some quiet time and you know some time away from it get some inspiration that's usually when I like to try to you know go for some walks or um, just do something something else that I enjoy for a little bit just to get my mind away from the stress and and the more you think about it the the harder it is to get kind of back on that creative path. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you have, we've talked about a lot of things, I think, but do you have any, uh, any more advice for people who are starting out? Uh, just don't give up. Just keep trying because it is, um, it's a difficult market. I, I have a dog right now that's drinking water from the water bowl. I don't know if you can hear that. I apologize if you can. Um, no, I think it's okay. <laughs> okay. My, my advice to anyone who, um, is just starting out is to not give up and to keep trying. It's, um, it's something that you have to love doing and something that you have to feel connection with, um, because it is a difficult industry to, to work in. It's, it's a art, the art world is a small world. Everyone kind of knows everyone. Mm -hmm. So you just have to keep pushing through and try to just be as individual as you possibly can be, because the more that you can stand out from other people, the, the more you have an opportunity to really shine. 
So I think that it's, it's best if you just be yourself, keep trying, keep pushing, and um, don't let those naysayers tell you that you can't do what you want to do. If it makes you happy, then you need to do it. Cool. Yeah. That's good advice, I think. Thanks. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think we're kind of, we're kind of at the moment where I ask you, how can people learn more about you and your art? Sure. So, um, I have a website that I just launched. Mm -hmm. It's Rhonda Hewitson designs.com. Uh, you can find me there. You can find me on Instagram at Rhonda underscore Hewitson. Uh, same for Facebook, Rhonda underscore Hewitson. Um, and yeah, check out my work and I hope you like it and everything's available for sale. <laughs> I know that uh, I met you at an at an event. Are there any more events you're uh, going to uh, soon? Yes, I will be doing the Oakville Art in the Park. Um, it is the twenty uh, fourth of August, I believe. Well, it's August long weekend. Mm. I should know this date, but I don't right now. I'm sorry. Um, I'm also exhibiting at the Paris Bohemian Gallery in Paris, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And I will be exhibiting at Sugo on Surrey, which is a restaurant, a brand new restaurant in Guelph, Italian restaurant. And I will be exhibiting there for um, most of August straight through to the middle of November. So mm -hmm. uh, lots of opportunity to see my work. It's going to be available in a few different places. I'm also currently exhibiting at a restaurant in downtown Guelph called the Diana. Um, uh, there, the manager there has been gracious enough to allow me to keep my stuff on the wall for quite a while now. So yeah, if you're ever in the area, check it out. Um, I would love for anyone to see it and to give me some feedback on what they think of my work. That's great. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you everybody for watching. This has been Everyday Expertise. I'm Angela. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to share this video with friends and colleagues who may also enjoy this topic. Let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment below or check the description for our social media. See you next time.